Beautiful to see you all here. My name is Julius. I am a photographer and videographer. I would like to welcome you to this channel. I will be creating a lot of landscapes. I'll take you through the processes I go through as I create some of the works that I create. Take you through the journey, the creative process, you know, the whole small behind the scenes things that happens. And as you can see today, I'm really messed up. Just managed to break this circular polarizer. But the other day, it's barely two weeks old and I'm really crushed, really crushed right now. I was really hoping to use it for some of the works I'm going to be creating for every shoot I was going to use. Uh, but, you know, it is what it is. Some of these things just happen. I'm grateful at least it didn't break the camera. What happened, I, I just looked aside for one minute. Looking back, the thing was, you know, tumbling down the, on the rocks over there on the river and really broke the whole front uh, element of the whole thing. But I'm grateful the lens is, is intact. Nothing happened to it. It's just... just yeah, it's, it's frustrating because it's barely two weeks old. I was really looking forward to using it, but what, what else can I do? Try and do some close-ups of this. Should be interesting. All the way down. See a nice of 100. Then let's see what you get. Okay. So what you need to know is, since it's white, it's going to reflect some light on it. So what I possibly can do is have this circular polarizer on the lens so you're gonna have some little bit of the reflection going out of the image otherwise this is gonna be distracting to look at the white reflecting back into the camera well the thing that no one tells you is that in landscape photography you have to do a lot of walking walking around to find the right composition find the right uh, textures, right colors. It really does take a lot of time to find the right image. But once you find it, it just becomes so worth it. Because, oof, boy, once you do a lot of walking around, just trying to find the right light. So early on today, I stumbled upon this beautiful uh, waterfall kind of formation. There's actually two of them. Uh, you can see right, right in front here. And then there's another one up there. I want to see if we can capture both of them in the same frame, the same focal length, focal distance I mean. And then, or alternatively, we can do a focus stacking for both of them. We see if we can capture them in the same uh, kind of range. Otherwise, there's quite a significant distance in between the two of them. So, let's see how this goes. Of course, I, I wore the wrong shoes for this. <laughs> but let's see what we can make out of this. Let's mess around with this. 
Now we can do away with the reflections. Okay. So not so bad. Okay, so what we need is to focus on the very closest one. Which looks uh, slightly okay. A little bit of a zoom in. Okay. It looks much better already. Focus is good. Let's see. Okay. Reflections already are gone. Let's see if we can go into that. Okay, cool. Let's try and go all the way into here. Beautiful. Let's try landscape orientation for this as well. See if there's anything that could have some interesting uh, capture. Oh, you'll forgive me, I'm not so good at this. It's my first time doing this, so I'm still learning the grammar, the right language. <laughs> Uh, I should also add, I'm, I'm the biggest introvert around, so this is really out of my league. <laughs> Let's capture this. Not so bad. So let's try a portrait orientation and try and see if we can capture all of uh, the small waterfalls that we have in this river. <laughs> it's not really waterfalls, it's just some mud made. Uh, water dams, uh, if I may call them that, where people just try and have some sand off of this and, you know, sell them, sell the sand to whoever can buy it for their construction needs. So let's see this again. This, this to F14. Tilt up ever so slightly. Let's do a little bit of focus check. Everything looks to be in good focus. Let's take a shot. Not so bad. Not so badly off. All this time we've just been utilizing the 24 to 105 millimeter lens. So what we've done, we've shifted to the 14 millimeter Samyang lens, which is fully manual. And as much as I, I wouldn't like that option, because since we've introduced, you know, with this, this huge front element, we can't have a little bit of polarization to go into the shot. So I may need to just go and edit this in post and, you know, come up with something that looks presentable and interesting. So let's try mess around with the angling. Because, oof, bro, this thing is super wide, like crazy, crazy wide angle. There we go. Wow. It's <laughs> Dude, this thing is crazy wide, like literally the tree is right in front of us and it's capturing like the whole thing from the top of the tree to the water in the same frame, which is crazy stuff. While framing for this, we just happened to turn around and stumbled upon this beautiful scene over here where the water just sweeps down from this side of, uh, of the river, downstream, into this uh, dam that we just shot. And looking from this angle or this perspective, Kind of looks interesting, like with the rocks in the frame, uh, with the water just flowing down into into the rocks, and into this kind of pool that uh, establishes itself down there with the sand and all that. So let's see what we can capture with this setup. Here we go. Damn! You definitely have to see this. Let's change a little bit. See if we can capture more real estate into the frame. Quick. Let's cut down the reflections a little bit. There we go. First image. 50% into the frame. Over there. There we go. So what I've done, I've just captured three shots, which we're gonna stitch them together to look like a panorama is made out of it. And bruh, you should definitely see how beautiful this looks like. 
like I've just managed to cut down the reflections of the light off the water surface and from what I can see this kind of looks interesting like really interesting the textures the colors everything just oof, perfectly blends into this beautiful image so let's do another panel top down take a picture tilt down a little bit okay cool just be careful I'm gonna lose a second filter <laughs> let me just mention this having a circular polarizer slapped onto a lens is really something I never thought I'd need but just looking at the amount of significant changes that I'm able to pull off with this setup it's uh it's really becoming something I can't leave on any shoot that I go out on because I'm able to cut the water reflections or rather just any unwanted reflections uh, that's bouncing on uh, the, the lens so just having that uh, flexibility to be able to program the light uh, just for the purpose of calling it that way it's really something so interesting so let's see see that that's my foot bruh I just took a dive into that shit Ugh. So since I was, I was already in too deep well I did the reasonable thing dipped my feet into actual water because it was soaking mud so right now I'm literally soaking in my own shoes but what can I say That has been fun. Look forward to seeing you on the next one. Cheers. It's necessary to know that everybody won't see it, that everybody won't join you, that everybody won't have the vision. It's necessary to know that that a lot of people like to complain, but they don't want to do anything about their situation. That you are an uncommon breed. You know, you have to know within yourself that I can do this. Even if no one else sees it for me, I must see it for myself. If you want to be the best at that, if you want to reach the pinnacle of that, you must be. There's no way around. You have to be obsessed with obtaining that. Greatness in any field, greatness cannot be achieved without obsession. People will tell you obsession is a bad thing. It's possible for you to live your dream. It's necessary that you associate with winners, that you work your system, that you are relentless, that you never give up. It's you, you've got to take personal responsibility to make it happen. Chasing the perfect landscape has been on my mind for quite some time now. I, I was doing drone shots only for the kind of work I was doing for that. But got to a point I realized like you guys only see the final output. You haven't actually seen what happens behind the scenes. You haven't actually been there to see and experience how much craze it actually gets out in the field. So I thought, you know, uh, for a change, I might as well just give you guys a feel for what happens behind the scenes. To actually come to a location with me, experience the whole craziness that happens behind the scenes, go into the water, go into the mud. But that's the whole thing. That's the whole joy of actually being out here. It's it's the small things that make the whole experience worthy. And you know, without having to go through the, all these extra miles, you can't actually get the perfect landscape. So that's the whole essence of choosing the perfect landscape. We're gonna do a lot of this, travel to random locations, random destinations, some very remote locations. I can assure you that. But at the end of the day, all I care about is creating the perfect landscape. And 
we have a lot of it out here so by the end of all this i hope you guys are going to enjoy this and let's grow together let's share ideas together let's explore because there's so much stuff we can actually create out here it just takes time and have all the time i need here we have the right tools now so let's see how far this goes cheers <laughs>